Okay, number nine, let's look for what kind of graph this is going to be. So looking at this the way it is, this is one that where you have to do the complete the square steps again, but before we even do that, again, if you're not sure what kind of graph this is going to be, look at what kind of things they're asking you for in the question itself. Now this one's asking you for asymptotes, transverse, and conjugate. Now the only graph that has those is going to be the hyperbola. So this is going to be a type of hyperbola, so it's good to know ahead of time what kind of graph you should be looking for. We need to first put this into the proper form so that way we can get some information here and uh, draw the graph. So uh, like we did before with the ellipses, what you're going to do is put the x's and the y's together first. So we're going to do 4x squared plus 16x goes first. Then we have negative 9y squared plus 18y. We're going to put the 29 across on the other side of the equal sign. So we would just have variables on the left hand side. At this point, now that the x's and y's are together, you want to factor a number out of each of those. So, and you don't want to factor out a y, just factor out a number from both of those. You're going to factor out a 4, and you have x squared plus uh, 4x. Make sure you leave a space in there. You want to leave a space for the complete the square steps. So we pull out a 4, and you get these two, but then you have a space left over for complete the square step. The next one. If there's a, a negative sign in front, you want to factor out the negative. So we're going to factor out negative 9. It'll leave you with y squared minus 2y. Don't forget to change that sign there. Uh, and then once again, you're going to leave a space that's equal to 29. We're going to do the complete the square steps for each one. So complete the square step works by you take this number divide it by 2 and then square it. We take 4 divided by 2, that's 2. You square it, that's going to give you a plus 4. On this side, you're going to add the 4, but like I mentioned earlier, don't forget to multiply the number you get here by the number on the outside. So we're going to add a 4 times 4 here. Okay, you're adding that number inside times whatever you have on the outside. So it's really important to do that step. Next, we're going to do complete the square with the negative 2. We want to take negative 2, divide it by 2. We get negative 1. Then we square negative 1, and you get a plus 1 here. We're going to add a plus 1 here as well, but remember again, multiply by whatever you have outside the parentheses. If it's, if it's negative, we need to take that sign with it. So on this side of the equal sign we're going to take 29 and we're going to add 16 and then we're going to subtract 9. We'll do all that. Next we're going to factor each of these. So that's going to go into an x quantity squared and a y quantity squared. The number that goes inside the blank would be if you take this number divided by 2 that's what goes inside here. So 4 divided by 2 is plus 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. That goes inside there. If you take all this uh, and add, the, you do add it together, so 29 plus 16 minus 9, you should get 36 as a result when you combine all that together. We need to get this side to be a 1, so we have to divide everything by 36 and then you want to reduce the fractions. I'll put the ending result up here and then that's what we're going to use to answer the rest of these uh, blanks here. When we reduce this, 4 divided by 36, that's 1 ninth. So we're going to get x plus 2 squared over 9 and then we're going to do minus y minus 1 squared over 4. That's going to equal 1. So you have 9 and 4 uh, down below once you reduce it. So now we get to that point where we're going to answer the blanks now that we have it in the proper form. This is going to be a hyperbola we mentioned earlier. We see there's a minus sign in between that verifies that it should be a hyperbola. If it's a plus, it would be an ellipse. And what tells you whether the hyperbola opens up sideways or up and down is what letter comes first. If X comes first, it opens sideways. If Y comes first, 
it opens up and down. Regard doesn't matter what numbers you have underneath here. Remember for hyperbolas, A or B could be larger. Whereas if you have ellipses, A has to always be the larger one. So make sure we don't uh, confuse that. We know this one opens up sideways because X comes first, not because the larger number is underneath here. It's because X physically comes first, okay? So it opens up sideways. Whatever comes first is automatically, no matter what the number is, automatically A squared every time, regardless of whether it is X on top or Y on top, doesn't matter. Whatever number comes first here, that's in, it's in front of the minus sign, that's going to be your A squared. So A squared equals nine and B squared equals four. A is gonna be three and B is equal to two when we take the square root of those. Now let's look at our formula to find the C. I mentioned before with the ellipses that you're always gonna have A squared and B squared in here and if you're unsure what it is, just make it opposite sign of what's in the original formula. If it's negative, that means there'll be a plus inside here. So we're gonna do square root of A squared plus B squared is the correct formula to find our C. Uh, so let's put that in. We're gonna do three squared plus two squared. That's the square root of nine plus four. So we get square root of 13. And square root of 13 is about uh, 3.6 for graphing purposes. We'll come back to that a little bit later. So now we have A, B, and C, we're ready to graph it. First thing you want to always do is uh, find the center. So before we graph, let's find the center. Remember, it's always opposite sign of what you see inside here. It's going to be negative 2 and positive 1. We'll do for that one, negative 2 and positive 1. So we want to plot that. Negative 2, positive 1, it's going to be right there. So that's what we start with. For hyperbolas, we need to make that dotted line box around it. The A always goes in the direction that it opens up. Doesn't matter which one's bigger or smaller. A always goes in the direction it opens up. So from the center here, I'm gonna to go to the left, three, and I'll have a dotted line over there. And I'm gonna to go to the right three, and I'll have a dotted line over here. Now going up and down, that's the B is two. So I'm gonna go up two here. So it means I'll have a dotted line going across there. I'm gonna go down two, down to here. And I'll have a dotted line going there. So A goes left and right, B goes up and down. That gives me my dimensions of the box. So why do we do the box? It's because you wanna connect the diagonals together. And the diagonals are what's gonna form your asymptote lines, which is part of the graph. So I have all that is, is setup work. Now, at the edge of the box right here and right here is where the graph is going to touch. These are your vertices. So your vertices are always has to do with A. We went this direction with A and that direction with A. Those are your vertices. We can write those down now because we can get the coordinates directly from the graph. The first coordinate is, we have to go negative one, two, three, four, five, so negative five and one, so negative five and one, and the other one is gonna be one, one. Okay, so those are your two vertices. Uh, next, we wanna find the what the general graph looks like. Now the general graph, you'll, you'll follow this dotted line, hit the vertice and go down that way, the other one's going to do something like that. So this is what the general graph is gonna look like. Now what about the foci? The foci is 3.6. From the center, you're gonna go 3.6 this way, 3.6 that way. The foci should always be inside the curve. So it should be inside here and it's always outside of the box if you did this correctly. If you get a foci that's inside the box, you probably put a minus sign instead of a plus sign. It's gotta be outside the box. So 3.6 is gonna be about right here. And if we go three in the other direction, actually 0.6 will be about here, just outside, because this is three to get this point, and then 0.6. This is three and another 0.6 about right there. So again, it's inside the, the curve. 
to get those, what, it, what I did was uh, first from the x value of negative 2, so I start with negative 2, I added and subtracted 3.6, which is the same thing as square root of 13. So square root of 13 goes here. The y value, all these are they have the same y value. The y value will be a 1. So from the center, I went to, to the left and to the right an amount of square root of 13, and that's those are my coordinates there. Okay, so now we're going to do the asymptote. Okay, now the asymptote would be the equation of these diagonal dotted lines. We can write these in slope intercept or uh, point slope form, sorry, point slope form. You don't have to separate them like you would have done. A lot of times the online homework systems ask you to separate it and do a positive and a negative version. You don't have to worry about that. We can just write it all out in point slope form. Point slope form, we're going to do y minus the y coordinate of your center. So we're going to do y minus 1 equals. Now this next thing, we have to do the slope. And if you have a hyperbola that opens up sideways, the value you want to put here is b over a. That's what the formula says for it, b over a. Uh, so in this case, it's 2 thirds. And you're going to do x minus a negative 2. So you're always subtracting this. Minus a negative will give you a plus. And so that would be the equation for your asymptote. y minus 1 equals 2 thirds x plus 2. The rest of these are just going to use a formula. Transverse axis is 2 times a. 2 times 3 is 6. Conjugate axis is 2 times 2, which is 4. And your eccentricity is always c over a. It's the same formula that you would use for ellipses. Also works for hyperbolas. Eccentricity is square root of 13, which is c value over 3. Uh, so c over a, and if you get a decimal equivalent, it's 1.2. Now in the test, you don't have to worry about putting both of them. Just put one or the other. I'll take both answers, either the decimal or the exact value. So now the problem's finally done. We've answered everything.